For me, the journey began almost four decades ago. I was a young trainee. Multiple sclerosis in the 1970s was an entirely untreatable disease. This was a particularly aggressive presentation of multiple sclerosis. She was a superstar, a lawyer of the Carter administration at age 27. And I remember thinking that this was the most unfair thing I had seen in medicine. MS is caused by cells of the immune system, inflammatory cells that for some reason are misguided and attack the myelin coating of our nerve cells in the brain and in the spinal cord. With the inflammation against the myelin covering, nerve impulses that require communication between different parts of our nervous system become disrupted. A generation ago, after 15 years of relapsing MS, 50% of people required a cane and had developed progressive MS, leading to a wheelchair or bedbound state. So one of the great challenges in the field has been to develop therapies that are even more effective and that are safe enough to be given early in the disease. It was thought that T cells were necessary and also sufficient to cause disease. So all that you needed was T cells. And that was the state of MS research in the early 1980s. Ray Adams, my chair and mentor in Boston, said you should try to develop a model that looked more like multiple sclerosis. We developed a model in which B cells working alongside T cells were responsible for flares of demyelinations. So we sent this grant to NIH asking to use a new therapy that was targeted against B cells called rituximab, made by Genentech. And they told us that we think that you are promising investigators, but the science lacks biological plausibility. We're happy to fund you, but change the therapy to a T-cell therapy, and we'd be delighted to move forward. So we were devastated, but we were not ready to quit. At that time, I began discussions with Genentech about the feasibility of doing exactly what we had proposed to the NIH, carrying out trials for both relapsing and progressive forms of MS with rituximab. And it was our hope that we could use ocrelizumab as a more modern version of rituximab and that this would be safer and equally effective for prolonged use. Ocrelizumab destroys B cells that are moving about in the body. Those are destroyed reliably and for several months with one dose of ocrelizumab treatment. The availability of a highly effective and well-tolerated treatment means that people at the dawn of their MS can be treated with a therapy that will essentially completely block the inflammation in myelin that causes relapses and remissions. And we are optimistic that young people today faced with more aggressive forms of MS will have a far brighter outlook than did that young woman 40 years ago. Since being diagnosed with MS, I have had a few bouts of the disease progression. My most recent flare-up after my child was born, it's set me back mentally and physically. I had a fairly severe attack that really limited my ability to use my leg. I could walk for a minute, and then after a minute, it was like a totally different person had taken over my body. My hope with ocrelizumab is that I will have coverage for a much longer period of time, and therefore I'll be able to take the medicine before I get pregnant, and it will still be active in my body. It'll give me more strength through my pregnancy and beyond afterwards, which is incredibly important to me. My hope is that ocrelizumab will make a life-changing difference for many hundreds of thousands of people with MS today and many more who may develop MS in the future.